On this video I will show how I built this book matched walnut dining table for myself. I really like how it turned out. It's not easy to find these kind of slabs in Finland, so when I saw them I just decided to buy them and then decide later on what I will make out of them. I wasn't really sure what I want to do. I was thinking should I make a river table, but no. I'm not going to make a river table out of these. I think it was a correct choice to make a book match table out of these, so then I got to work. So the first thing obviously is to cut them so that I can start the glue up. When working with slabs there's always bark to be removed and uh, normally there's one or two or quite many knot holes to clean up. These ones were pretty easy actually, obviously there were some things to clean up, but uh, it didn't take too long. So normally people in YouTube are saying that they really hate sanding. I actually don't hate sanding. The thing I hate, I really really hate, is flattening the slabs. But uh, the thing that makes it a bit more tolerable is this woodpecker's jig that I'm using. So. Uh, after I've been using this one, it's much nicer process. I still hate it, but uh, it's not as bad as it used to be. The slabs were quite badly twisted and bowed, so I had to take out more material than I actually wanted, but eventually I got them flat and then I could continue with the build. Then even this isn't a river table, I still needed to use a bit of epoxy for filling the holes on the slab. Uh, I decided to dye them black because I like the uh, contrast between the uh, walnut and black epoxy. I did have a few leaks when doing these pours, but uh, I didn't film them because I needed to pretty quickly patch them up. So. Uh, just so you know, the tape I was using didn't really hold up or maybe I didn't attach it correctly. So there were, I think it was like two or three different places where it leaked. But as mentioned, I managed to get them patched quick and easily. Then my camera ran out of battery and because I'm an idiot, I started filming with my mobile phone. And as I've never actually done that before, I didn't figure out that I needed to do it in landscape. So there's a few clips now done in my mobile phone in portrait mode, but don't worry. I recharged my camera and there will be proper footage later on, but this was just a stupid mistake by myself. What I'm doing here is uh, getting ready for the glue up and I'm using dominoes for getting them aligned properly. I'm using tight bond 3 for the glue and it has roughly 10 minutes of open time and I was a bit worried will I have enough time to actually make everything done alone and uh, I checked the other video afterwards it actually took 12 minutes for me to get all the dominoes in place and the glue done and the clamps done so I could have used maybe some other glue with longer open time, but I barely made it, so nothing bad happened. Normally I fill up the small holes in the epoxy with CA glue and the activator and then sand it. Uh, it's been working fine, but for this one I wanted to try something new. I saw, I think it was in John Malek's video, he was using Mohawk. Uh, epoxy sticks and uh, I thought I ordered them but I think this is slightly different product but a very similar application style so uh, there's a lot of different colors in this one obviously I decided to use black but it was interesting very easy to apply actually to just rub it in then right away you can scrape it off and start sanding. So I was actually pretty pleased how this product works. Strong recommendation for using this if you don't want to do the CA glue way. I was thinking beforehand that this color probably doesn't match the one I have with the epoxy completely and it doesn't. But uh, after f using the finish and getting everything done it's not too bad and this table is for myself so 
just wanted to try it out how the, how it actually works and as mentioned i am pretty happy with it but obviously use caution when you do it like i did so uh filling holes next to the epoxy you might face some issues I wanted to leave the live edges looking as natural as possible, so I only gave them very light sanding using this soft pad on my sander. So even in the finished product there are small holes left, but I actually like how it looks. But then it was time to start lifting the table back and it's quite heavy. I had some difficulties in moving it over. I'll spare you from all the footage I had from sanding, nothing special about it. So I started with 80 grit and went up to 180, which is the standard that I normally use with tables when using Rubio Monocoat as the finish. As this is a book match table, I was slightly worried that the slabs will want to turn in different ways. So for the first time for myself, I decided to use C channels at the bottom. So obviously first I need to cut them in length and then start routing them to the bottom. I still consider myself as a beginner, especially when it comes to using router. This was actually the first time I do and use C channels like this, so... <laughs> I was a bit worried again that I will ruin something, but uh, everything went actually okay, so... This was an easy one, but still, whenever you do things for the first time, you never know what kind of issues you might face. But luckily, it all went very nicely, actually. I think the only correct way of attaching this is to use threaded inserts. And if you have been watching other YouTube videos of people building stuff, I'm sure you have seen this process done a million times. There's nothing special in the way I do it, so... Drill the holes and put the threaded inserts in and attach whatever you are attaching. So, as mentioned, nothing special on this process. I have seen some debate on whether C channels actually help or not. I have no way of knowing, but at least I don't think they will hurt. So I decided to add three to the bottom of the table. So. Hopefully they will do at least some part in uh, keeping the table flat for the years to come. So when flattening the table, I needed to take more material out than I wanted. And I was left with about 5 centimeters or 2 inches for thickness of the table. And it could have been strong enough, but I still decided to add these extra support pieces to the bottom of the table just in case someone decides to dance on my table, so at least it'll, it will not bend under any weight now with this added support. Then it was time to uh, attach the table legs as well. And again, I'm using threaded inserts with the legs, and obviously I use threaded inserts with the uh, support pieces as well, which you can see already attached to the table. One thing I need to learn is how to turn these tables alone. As you can see, I'm struggling a bit trying to figure out how can I actually get it turned because this thing is heavy. But I eventually made it happen and then I started sanding the top side. And the same with the bottom side, I sand it to 180 grit. And then I used a small roundover bit on the sharp edges. I didn't want to do anything too drastic because as I mentioned I wanted to keep the live edge as natural as possible and I didn't want to do anything too drastic on the uh, edges but obviously just to get the sharp edges out I rounded them over. Whenever sanding tables I always mark the full area with my pen so that I can keep track on which areas I have sanded and which not. Again, probably something you have seen a million times done in YouTube already by others, so I didn't invent it. I'm just using the method because I think it really helps in making sure that all the areas get sanded properly. And before the final grid, in my case 180, I think it's a very good idea to, uh, to add water on the table, spray it on, 
this will lift the grain up and then when you do the final sanding and finishing you will have a much much smoother surface than if you forget to do it like I have done with my earlier table build. After everything has been sanded it is time to apply the finish and I'm using like everybody else Rubio Monocoat. It's one of the only few I've ever actually tried but uh, I like it it's easy to apply it's very hard to make any big mistakes with it and it seems to last for a long time so it is my go-to finish before someone tells me of something better obviously there are million choices and there are pros and cons with each but I like it so after the bottom has been Finished, then I will reattach the C channels and the additional support pieces and then work on the finish on top side of the table. Luckily I had a friend who came over just in the right time, so this time I didn't need to flip the table alone. I got some help, which made my life a lot easier. But as mentioned, same process on top side, so Add in Rubio monocoat and then I use a buffer to really get it in. I think it will help in uh, making sure that the finish is really really applied in all places and goes as deep to the wood as possible. So after about three to five minutes that I normally wait then I start rubbing everything off so take all the excess off that you can and you can see in the background my friend stayed over to see what I'm actually building and how is this finishing process done. And with that there's only one thing left, not really a mandatory thing, but I still had some leftover N3 nano coating from my previous table, so I decided to add the extra layer of protection on this one as well. I do have a 8 year old daughter and both her and myself we make a mess when we eat so I think extra protection will be pretty useful for both of us. Not sure how well this will work though because I only had a very limited amount of hard coat which should be done I think two or three layers. I only had enough material for one. So I added one layer layer of hard coat and then two layers of top coat. So probably not the best protection that could be done, but still, as you can see from the video, it seems to be working okay, but I guess it will wear out sooner than it would when applied correctly. But with that, I'm done with the build and hopefully you liked it and I would really appreciate if you subscribe and please leave any comments or questions you might have. See you on the next one.